Monty, really? You, Earl of Highhurst? Eight people would have to die for that to happen. Hello! Welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the Stitchery, the spooky Stitchery. Happy Pinkoween! Happy Pinktober! But most importantly, Happy Spirit Week! Yay! Today is Musical Monday. Hi, interrupting real quick. What is Spirit Week? Spirit Week is where there's an entire week where you make something that goes with a specific theme, all listed down below, and then you make a video or make or post a picture. Again, all the information is linked down below. Remember to tag Teresa at Curtis Crochet, Ashley at Gwinspired, and me, the Spoonie Stitcher, in anything you do, video or picture. Now, if you want to be in a slideshow at the end of the month, you need to email me and you need to tell me what name you want me to put it under and a tiny little bit about what you, th how you think that what you made fits the theme. Remember, this is every fiber art imaginable. If you sew, if you embroider, if you needle felt, if you crochet, if you knit, if you loom knit, if you weave, any fiber art is allowed. So, okay, back to Spirit Week. So, Musical Monday. What did you guys make for Musical Monday? I am super excited to see what everybody made. Very excited. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I have an entire series dedicated to Broadway bears. Did you really think Musical Monday wasn't going to happen as one of the Spirit Weeks? I'm genuinely curious if people thought that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so behind me, you can see my Phantom Bear from Phantom of the Opera. Yes, I have all kinds of musicals that I love and adore more than anything, but just to be a little different, I decided to do my favorite Halloween musicals. So first, let's start with what I'm dressed as. I am dressed as the lovely Sibella from A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Based on the book, oh, I always get the book name wrong. I'm putting it here. But more importantly, I love the movie that it comes from, Kind Hearts and Core Nets. So A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder is about a man, Monty Navarro, who finds out all of a sudden he gets a letter that tells him he is actually the secret heir to Highhurst Castle. He is actually a dice with. So of course the first thing he does is tell the love of his life, Sibella, that he is going to be the ninth Earl of Highhurst. And she says, well, you saw the beginning. Not very supportive. <laughs> or is she? So, having been completely rejected by the love of his life since he was born, um, he decides to go to the Dysquiths to see if they will welcome him with open arms, and they don't. So he starts to become a little discouraged until he has an idea. And I won't spoil the show for you because it's fantastic. And guess what? Somebody recorded it and you can watch it on YouTube. Shh. <laughs> you can, you can watch the whole thing with the original cast who won the Tony for best musical in 2014. Let's give him a hand back when good Tony musicals actually still won. But I will say that whoever plays um, the Earl of Highhurst, the first Earl of Highhurst, he has to play eight other roles. And they are quick and they are amazing. And oh my goodness, the guy who did it for the 2014 uh, version, <whistles> so impressed. He is amazing. So is Sir Alec Guinness in the movie. He has to play all the relatives, even the women. It's amazing. It's great. And um, funny. That's A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Highly recommend it. Next musical also involves murder. Here's your hint. If you would like to know what it is, it is a drop of blood. Sweeney Todd. Now, most people know Sweeney Todd is about the killer barber who was wrongly imprisoned 
all that kind of jazz. And then, you know, he meets Mrs. Lovett and they turn people into pies. Okay, yeah. Uh, no, Sweeney Todd is not one of my favorite musicals. However, I love Angela Lansbury and she did a phenomenal job as Mrs. Lovett. I prefer Sweeney Todd if I see it in a concert format. Don't need all of the, you know, special effects for the blood and guts and stuff. I like when they have almost no set, super simple costumes, and all of the performance is just the acting. I really, really like those versions. So if you ever find a concert version, highly recommend it. However, I don't recommend the movie by Tim Burton. Now, you know I love Tim Burton. I dedicated an entire month to him. But I don't think he did this musical justice at all. That's just my opinion. We all have failures in life. And um, this next musical has a giant one of mine. <laughs> so if you've watched several of my videos throughout, what, the summer and the fall, um, I was trying to make a Broadway bear. Smaller Broadway bear. Yeah, it was going to be Wednesday from the Addams Family musical. The first one, not this new one. The, the new one, I... I don't know. They borrow some of the songs or some of the tunes, but it's not the same song. I don't know. I recently found out there were two versions and I was like, that's not the Adams Family musical I know. So anyway, I'm talking about the one in 2010 with Nathan Lane, B.B. Newworth, and Krista Rodriguez. That's the one we're talking about. Um, I love the Adams Family musical. It's clever. It's funny. It's great. I love, love, love it. And the first cast was the best cast and you cannot change my mind. No, that was perfect casting. So I was trying to make a Wednesday doll and ironically my doll has no head so I guess that works but I have no Broadway bear. Hopefully I'll have one more this year. We'll see. But anyway I decided to make something else very quick um, so that I could have something for the Addams Family musical and one of my favorite songs in the musical is The Moon and Me. It is sung by Fester. It is so sweet. I love that song. So I made a little moon. This is a club crochet pattern that I just didn't stuff. That's the only difference. I just didn't stuff it. So I made a little moon for The Moon and Me. And if you want to know what the Addams Family musical is all about, it's very simple. Wednesday is all grown up and she meets a boy who is nothing like what she grew up with. He is totally normal. Or is he? All the family meets and, you know, nobody gets along. So that's, that's the premise. <laughs> you may guess if you like. This is also a Tim Burton movie. Did that give you a hint? Beetlejuice. This is Beetlejuice the Musical. Um, if you didn't know, I used to absolutely love making bows. <laughs> this is my bow design and I absolutely love it. And you know, Christmas is coming. So if you guys would like a bow tutorial for how to make this type of bow, not this bow, cause this is not Christmassy, but I mean this type of bow for your presents or whatever, let me know down below. I'd be happy to. So I made a bow for Beetlejuice. I didn't put the little backing on it yet because they didn't come in time, <sighs> but um, I will because I, I do want to wear it. I think it'll be cute. Um, I do wear my crochet bows and they're in some of my videos, but I never turned my head so you guys can't see them. <laughs> I should turn my head more, I guess, or wear them higher. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I made a bow that kind of reminds, you know, it's got the Beetlejuice colors. And oh, side note, so excited. Oh, Fire released a Beetlejuice hook and I got one. So excited. Anyway, Beetlejuice the musical. Music wise, Beetlejuice actually makes a really cool musical. Who knew? I was very skeptical. I went, Beetlejuice the musical? Really? It's actually very good. Plot wise, music wise. However, the fact that they have to add in some really dirty jokes. I mean, they went there. And a lot of language when you know there's kids in the audience because kids saw the movie and now they want to see the musical. Mm. Why? 
Why? Why would you do that? I didn't understand why Hamilton did it either. I mean, Disney bleeped it out on their their version when they showed it on Disney+. Plus. Everybody loved it. It was just fine. See, you could do without it. I just don't understand why they have to do that when they know that there's kids. But anyway, music-wise, fantastic. Go listen to the soundtrack. And uh, it actually makes a very good musical. One of my favorite numbers is Say My Name. The other one is the classic Dead Mom. Oh my gosh. The girl who originated that role who does Dead Mom. I don't know how she does that to her voice and not ruin it. Mm. So amazing. On the 21st day of the month of September, in an early year of a decade not too long before our own, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence. And this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in a seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. Little Shop of Horrors! Yay! I love Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know why. I just do. It's fantastic. It's funny. It's great. I, it's so out there, but it works. I, I don't know. It, it just works. So in case you don't know what Little Shop of Horrors is, for some reason, there is a man named Seymour, a girl named Audrey, and they work in a plant shop. And Seymour buys an unusual plant that is very cute. And I wanted to crochet the plant so badly. I just didn't have time. But Club Crochet has a great pattern for Audrey too. That's what he names the plant because the girl's named Audrey and he's got a crush on her. So he calls it Audrey too. And it's kind of cute. The plant is the showpiece. They need this unusual plant in order to get people into the store. So, they try feeding it everything, and it constantly wilts and looks worse and worse. And finally, Seymour is ready to give up. And he's going over to the rose bushes and he pricks himself, and now there's blood on his finger. The plant wakes up. So, I made a band aid. Because <laughs> eventually, Seymour is feeding the plant his blood so that it will grow and he's got band-aids all over his fingers so i made a band-aid for seymour so it's a little it's a band-aid for seymour's finger oh. i also really love the music in this it's just so fun it's so quirky it's so offbeat but it works i don't know and then of course you have the villain which, yes, is Audrey too, but you have another villain, the dentist. Oren Scrivello, DDS. Which in the movie is played by Steve Martin, brilliantly, by the way. Fun fact, the guy who's playing Oren right now in that particular production was the guy who played the first Monty Navarro, Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Remember when I talked about that a few minutes ago? Yeah, so full circle. <laughs> So I highly recommend going to find any production online and seeing the actual show because it's amazing and I prefer that ending, but maybe that's just me. Let's go back to Sondheim. Into the Woods. I love Into the Woods. Now, I didn't when I was younger. It actually gave me nightmares, but I grew out of it <laughs> and now I love it. So uh, for Into the Woods, I made this. This is my new glasses case um, that I adore. So I'm not wearing my glasses right now, which is great. So I can use them to show you. So this glasses case is, get this, no sew, mm -hmm, and no buttons, no toggles, no thing that you have to sew on to make everything latch together. Nope. You put the glasses inside, It fits sunglasses too. You take the strap, pull it around, and those babies aren't going anywhere. As long as you do it exactly how I say. Oh, 
Was that a hint at a coming tutorial? Maybe. But why did I make it these colors? What possible reason could I have to make it these colors? These are the items that the baker and his wife have to find. I thought that would be fun. Plus I needed a glasses case and I could created a new pattern. Now I have three versions of this. I have a version where it kind of goes like halfway like this. I've got one where it goes diagonally like this. And then I've got one where it meets in the middle and does it, but they all do the same thing and they all don't require buttons or toggles or anything. So yeah. And you don't have to sew anything except your ends. You don't even have to sew this chain. You're welcome. That's right. Christmas gifts, people. Christmas gifts. So, why do I love Into the Woods? Because it's all the Grimm's fairy tales. Just all their stories are intertwined. How cool is that? The original play has a lot more characters than the movie version with Meryl Streep, which no offense to Meryl Streep, but she's no Bernadette Peters. So uh, Bernadette Peters was the original witch and we love her for it. And the original baker and his wife, Chip Zane and Joanna Gleason. Nobody is them. They are phenomenal. They are perfection. In fact, the entire first cast of Into the Woods, which they taped and you can go watch, perfection. A lot of you are probably still watching this video and going, um, I know a musical you're not talking about that totally fits this and they're about to make a movie on it. I know. I know. You're waiting for it. You've been waiting for it. You're very confused that I haven't talked about it yet. Wicked. I do love Wicked. I saw it in London. And it is amazing. It is so clever. Stephen Schwartz is a genius. And Kristen Chenoweth and Idina Menzel, I mean, nobody is them. They originated the roles. But I'm not unhappy with the casting choices for the new movie. I've heard Cynthia Erivo's voice, it's phenomenal. And I've heard Ariana Grande sing when she's not doing her pop voice. She's doing her theater voice. I've heard her do that and perform. She's very good. Also, if Kristen Chenoweth, the original Glinda, says she's good, she'll be good. So I'm not worried. The only thing I don't like is the fact that they're doing it in two parts in two different years. Ugh, that's gonna be a long movie. Woo! But I'm still going to go see it. Especially when I heard that Jeff Goldblum is gonna be the wizard, which I've been crossing my fingers and toes for. So, yes. I think it's gonna be good. But let's go back to the musical. Well, I made a bow that represents Elphaba. So there's her hat, there's her skin. This is a different kind of bow. I do wish I'd made this kind instead. I really do. I wish I'd made this one, but eh, you know, too little too late. But the reason I waited to say this one last is because if you're still here, then you get to enjoy a new pattern. So you know my tots. This is a Barbie tot. They are the little creations that I made that are the shape of a tater tot, hence tot. And um, I have different collections. I have tutorials out there for Harry Potter characters and Frankenstein and all that kind of stuff. But you saw the size, right? This is the size of a typical tot. <laughs> typical tot. <laughs> and then this is the size of the animals. But I am so excited to introduce to you teeny tots. So we have Elphaba. <laughs> She's like a little bigger than my thumb. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> and Glinda. Are they not precious? <gasps> and it was an accident. I wasn't paying attention and I was making Alphaba and I was going around and around doing my regular things because she was supposed to be a regular tot. I was going around and all of a sudden I was like, oh, now I need to stop. And I went in the back loops and all of a sudden I realized as I was building it up, it was too small. Instead of frogging it, I was like, well, I wonder how that would look. So I kept going and I came up with this. Not to mention, 
none of this is sewn. I did this all in one piece. And I love it. I know technically she needs her little her little um braid, but we'll just say it's stuffed in her hat or something. And then Glinda, yeah, I had to sew a few things. She has accessories and her hair was a little difficult and stuff, but she's so cute. So these are the teeny tots. And you will see more very soon. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for joining me today for Musical Monday. I am so happy if you're still here. If you are, please write the word somewhere in your comment. Thank you again so much. Remember, tomorrow is Tea Party Tuesday. I hope you join me for that because trust me, it's good. It's also Tim Burton Tuesday. I combined them. So come back for my tea party. <laughs> Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Bye!